In this video, let's take a look at two lemma problems. Uh, these were sent in to us, uh, so let's see what we can do with them. At first view, they both seem problematic because, for example, we can get this one. We want to take the limit of this expression when x approaches minus 4, but that gives 0 down here in the denominator. And of course, anything divided by 0 is undefined. Well, let's take a look at the numerator. Here we have x squared minus x minus 20. Now, can we factor this out, perhaps? So, we could just try to use a quadratic formula, or maybe we can try and do it by inspection. We need two numbers so that when we multiply the two numbers together, we have minus 20. And when we add the two numbers together, it's negative 1. Now, 10 times 2 won't work, obviously. So we're thinking about 5 times 4. Uh, we want minus 20. If we had plus 5 and minus 4, that would give minus 20 when you multiply them together. But plus 5 and minus 4, that would be plus 1. So let's try it with x minus 5 and x plus 4, like this. So let's see, that's x squared minus 5x plus 4x, that's minus x, and then minus 20. So for the x squared minus x minus 20, we can replace that with this, x minus 5 times x plus 4. So let's do that. This is now x minus 5. and x plus 4, which cancels with this x plus 4. Now the problem makes more sense. So now we want to replace the x with minus 4. So we have minus 4 minus 5. And that should be minus 4 plus minus 5. So for this problem, we get that limit to equal minus 9. So notice that once we rewrote the numerator, it canceled this denominator here. Then we could go ahead and take the limit, and the problem made sense. So let's take a look now at the second one. And again, we have the same problem. If we replace x with 9, we're going to get 0 down in the denominator. Uh, if we had this expression, x squared minus 9, then of course, we could recognize that as a difference of two squares, x minus 3 times x plus 3. But we don't have x squared minus 9. We have x minus 9. But we can still write this. We can still write that as the difference of two squares just by using square roots. We'll have square root of x. And over here, Let's see, this is x squared. Excuse me, this is the square root of x, and the square root of x is x, not x squared. We have minus 3 square root of x plus 3 square root of x. Those cancel, and then this gives us minus 9. So here we're going to put this in place of x minus 9. And 
now we see that this term and this term cancel out. So we have 1 in the numerator. And then what's left down in the denominator is a square root of x plus 3. And x is supposed to approach 9. So if we put 9 in place of x, the square root of 9 is 3 plus 3 is 6. So that's what we get for that particular problem. So in each case, we see that we could do um, some manipulations so that even though it looked like the denominator was going to be 0, there was a cancellation. And all we had was this in the numerator. And then for this problem, these canceled. And then once we replace x with 9 here, we had an expression that made sense. And that's why most of these limit problems work. When you look at them initially, it might not make sense. But if you can do some manipulations with them, usually you can get them into a form where you can get a finite expression.